Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Boston City Hall, and thank you for coming to our event today, our civic engagement event for people with disabilities. I would like to uh, introduce myself. My name is Kristen McCosh. I'm the Disability Commissioner for the City of Boston. We're going to do uh, just a brief speaking program so you can meet some city officials, both, both elected and appointed, just so you can put a face to uh, some of the names that you see through email communication and outreach for the city in general. I can say on behalf of my staff and my colleagues in City Hall that we are all here to work for you. We're really glad that you came out today and we hope that you'll continue to come out in the future because um, we've made so many accessibility improvements in City Hall. I don't know if anyone, if everybody got to see the city council chamber renovation, but uh, it just um, the city council president was very supportive of it. The city of Boston property management department worked really hard and um, we just got it finished and it's open for business now. So if people want to come and testify at a hearing, I'm looking at Olivia, uh, we know that they'll all be able to come with uh, no barriers to access. So with that, I'm going to kick it off. We'll have a speaking program. I'd ask, like to ask everybody to please stand at the podium while they speak because we have a cart service that needs to have a visual on people speaking. And afterwards, we'll have a brief question and answer period, so um, get your questions ready. I'd like to first introduce City Council President Michelle Wu. Thank you, Commissioner, and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to your building, um, and we're so thrilled for you to be here today and to come any day of the year. Um, as mentioned, we're really proud uh, of all of the improvements that all the city departments have been working together to achieve. Um, so in my role, I think, is on behalf of Mayor Walsh and all 13 of the city councilors to say that we're really excited to host this event once again. What, what year is this that we're doing? third annual uh, um, Civic Engagement Day, and we want this, again, to be one day of 365 that the whole community feels empowered to come, voice your opinion, participate in the community process, in the legislative process, because we're really here to serve you. Our job each and every day is to help think about what policies will make neighborhoods safer, cleaner, uh, to make opportunity more accessible for all families. And that can only happen if we're partnering to understand what the solutions are that you all would propose. So um, just from the city council side, we have a weekly meeting every Wednesday, except for those weeks where there's a, a holiday in there. So it ends up being about um, 36, 37 weeks of the year. Wednesdays at noon, we meet in the city council chamber. Uh, the meetings are also live streamed online with closed captioning and the transcripts are posted afterwards on the city website. Uh, if, I hope everyone will take a, a peek into the chamber because we uh, just newly unveiled is a universally accessible space with improved sound so that everybody can hear what's happening uh, and with more screens so that the closed captioning can be seen from anywhere you're sitting in the chamber as well. These weekly meetings are the place to propose new legislation or to bring up issues. And then we break out from those weekly Wednesday meetings into individual committee hearings all throughout the week to talk in more detail about things. Those, whenever business is discussed and resolved at those committee meetings, they come back to a, a weekly Wednesday meeting for a full vote by the council. So there's a little bit of process involved, but what I would advise you is that if you have an idea, for a, a policy proposal, or if you just have a, 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 an issue or a challenge that you want addressed, reach out to your city councilor and set up a conversation. We, across the board in Boston, from the mayor on down to, to everyone in City Hall, are always wanting to help, but sometimes we need advice on what the best, um, the best steps that we can take would be. So please reach out. Um, you, each, one, each person has one district councilor and four at-large councilors that represent you directly, and you'll have the chance to vote on who those representatives are uh, in a little over two weeks at this point, right? Over two weeks. November 7th. So uh, the most basic way to participate, make sure you vote on November 7th, but then come back after the election, make sure you know your elected officials, and, and hold us accountable. Keep us focused on the issues that you care about. But again, thanks for coming today. Thanks to all the department heads and to the mayor and to all my colleagues, um, and especially to you all, the community.
Thank you, Councillor Wu. And I just want to give a shout out to the council president because she's always been very supportive of all our issues. One thing that she particularly spearheaded was um, work on language, um, a language ordinance in City Hall so that we can serve people who speak languages other than English, including American Sign Language. So thank you very much, Council President Wu. Next, I'd like to introduce the city clerk, Maureen Feeney, to say a few words about how you can get uh, involved in boards and commissions. Thank you so much, Commissioner. It's wonderful to be here joining you again this year. Um, this is such a fabulous um, opportunity for all of us who work in the building um, and want to think that we are aware and sensitive to the needs of our residents. Um, but thanks to the extraordinary work of Kristen and her team, uh, I think we have greater opportunity for dialogue, which is so important. Um, so to tell you a little bit about the city clerk's office, uh, there are three legs, everyone's probably heard this story 10 times, but there are three legs of government. Um, it's sort of a tripod. The first is the executive branch, which is the mayor's office. The second is the legislative branch, which is our wonderful legislators, led by um, our amazing president, who seems to be able to do it all. Um, and then there is the administrative arm of government, and that is the city clerk's office. So what do we do? Well, there are some people who tell you all we do is marry people, <laughs> but that is not all we do. Um, that is a portion of our job that is state required. But the real function of the city of the city clerk's office is to be there as a sort of connector to government. Um, in the city clerk's office, we issue everything from domestic partnerships, um, physician certificates, business certificates. If you have a business that you would like to open, um, our, our business certificates are very reasonable. They are $65, they're good for four years. And you can open a business in Boston if you have a Boston address. Depending upon the type of your business, you could actually have your home as your business, especially with some sort of online or some other type of, of business that doesn't require a lot of activity at a residential site. Um, the other aspect of our job is we are sort of the other half of the legislative um, division of the city. And that is, and we have right in the back there, if Trish Finnegan would raise her hand, um, Trish and uh, her assistant, Paul, put together the agenda for the city council meetings every week. Um, they then post the meetings before, you know, there's the, something called the open meeting law, which is very, very important, so that there is a minimum of 48 hours that a meeting has to be noticed. If, it's, if it falls in less than 48 hours, the meeting is required by the Secretary of State to be canceled. So um, it is a very time sensitive job. Uh, it's something that we work very hard to meet all those deadlines. Um, so as, as the council president mentioned, on Wednesdays we have the council meetings um, and while we're there, the um, stenographer takes all the minutes. Uh, it is live streamed and people can watch it. They can read it. Uh, and after the meeting, we then put together the minutes of all the council meetings. Um, so that part is, is sort of exciting because we're interacting um, with other divisions of the city. Uh, but there are a couple of things that I'd really like to bring to your attention today. And one of them is claims. You also would file a claim with the city clerk's office. So say you're walking or something and you, you trip, the curb is separated or there's a crack in the sidewalk or the sidewalk's uneven. 
you would come to the clerk's office, which is room 601 on the sixth floor. As I say to people, you can either walk into the wall or walk into my office. Hopefully you choose to walk into the, my office. Um, and so it, it's, it's, it's a process that we take any claims that someone may have. Now there is a $15 filing fee for claims. And if you are successful, that $15 will be returned to you. Um, this morning we had someone who came in a city vehicle, had hit his car, and now he no longer has a mirror to drive the car. Um, so, you know, that part of our business is, is pretty active. It's probably more so in the winter where we tend to have, you know, more problems with ice patches or other things. Um, also, if um, you are interested in becoming um, active in various parts throughout the whole city, there are 84 boards and commissions um, that have been established by, by statute. Um, and thanks to the great work of our staff, um, all 84 boards are now up on our website. You can look at all these boards. You can see who serves on those boards. And you can see the enabling legislation that will tell you more about the work that is done. Um, St. Patolf Architectural, uh, oh, this Back Bay. I mean, there's just every part of the city has some sort of um, border commission that impacts the lives of people who live here. Uh, groundwater Trust, all of these things that, that people really could not be aware of, but are very interested in the topics. Um, now, these appointees are all made by the mayor. The role that the clerk plays is, in fact, um, to swear all of those members of those boards and commissions into um, their position on that board of commission. But all of their meetings are posted, which is probably the busiest part of our job, and that is the public notices. Um, any meeting that is held uh, has to have a public notice placed on our public notice system, which has been reformed over the last couple of years. We now have an electronic board. I don't know if you've all seen them, seen it on the first floor, but it lists every meeting that is held in the city of Boston that is someone who is required, who is a, an organized group that has filed as a board or commission. So if you're interested in a topic, you can go to that site and actually see where these meetings are posted. Um, you can also see the makeup of the meeting, I mean, of the board. So in the statute, some boards or commissions require architects or attorneys, or they want community positions. They want people from the community to be um, involved on their board. So. Um, I know I don't want to go over, and I can tell I already am. Uh, never give me a microphone, but um, what I would tell you is I hope that you will reach out to us if you have questions or you think you might be interested in any of these components of our daily work. We would be delighted to hear from you. And again, thank you so much. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Clerk Feeney. And just to reiterate what the clerk said, uh, there are so many commissions and boards, and we don't want to pigeonhole people with disabilities just onto the Disability Commission. So if anyone's interested in applying for one of these boards, it would be a great idea to bring a disability perspective to other areas of the city where they may not have one. So, And also, people should know that every meeting is required to be accessible. Uh, we're working to get the meeting accommodation notice on all the me posted meetings, and that means that if you need an accommodation to attend a meeting, whether it's ASL or large print materials or whatever you may need, um, you can contact the department hosting the meeting, and they can work with you to get the accommodations. So next up, I'd like to introduce uh, Dion Irish, our elections commissioner, who partners with us in this event every year. Thank you, Commissioner. Of course, I get to follow our wonderful clerk, right? <laughs> Thank you. Great job. It's, it's so good to hear about all the services you provide. 
And sometimes, you know, I don't think we take enough time to think about how important those services are. Um, accessibility is critical, but also transparency. You know, the open meeting law um, requirements to ensure that folks know what is happening, when it's happening, so that you can participate. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the work that uh, my office does and, and thinking about what the, uh, Madam Clerk said. I think we fall into a similar space where we're sort of in between the um, executive and legislative branches of the city government. Um, with the election department, we provide the important service of having fair elections. And we also provide or conduct an annual census for the city of Boston of all residents age 17 and older. And that's important because it allows us to provide this information to the state jury commissioner affording our residents the opportunity to have a, a jury of their peers should they need one. And also, it helps us to maintain the accuracy of our voting list. Um, for today, I'm going to focus a little bit more on, on the work that we're doing on the election side of things. And this is, I think, an appropriate time to do so. Um, first, I want to, before I go further, I want to thank Commissioner McCosh and her team for the wonderful work that they're doing. So let's give her a round of applause. It's, you know, I, I'm a person that um, I'm attracted to work that, that has to be meaningful, and that's why I've been in city government for as long as I have. And I, it's, I'm thrilled every time I get an opportunity to work with her because of the passion that she brings to the work and the amount of progress that has been made in the city under her leadership in terms of accessibility. And I, and I know that she will tell you that she's not responsible solely for all these things. Many of you are have a strong role in this, the city council, the mayor, city agencies, and even um, private partners are doing their part. But somewhere you'll find her fingerprint on pretty much all of these projects. So I want to thank you again. Um, first, with elections, I think it's important for us to take a moment to think about why elections are important and why this department is important. Um, our forefathers, the founding fathers of this country, they, they left a, a different country and system where power was held by a few. and bloodline determined who, who would rule. And they decided to form a union where power was spread among all of us. And we um, elected our leadership through a, a democratic form of government. Obviously, in, in the beginning, all did not mean all. But in our quest and struggle for a more perfect union, we have uh, made our election process more inclusive. And so it's important for us to um, remind ourselves of that. And that's why we are really encouraging everyone to participate. But we understand that we also have our role to play to make sure that it's possible for everyone to participate. Uh, that's the reason why it's very important for the election department to work closely with our Commission for Persons with Disabilities. And, and we've done so. We're uh, happy um, that in the last um, two years, we've had a lot of things uh, that we've worked along with each other um, towards. Uh, this event is one. We also um, have held the um, accessibility ambassador training. And I'll speak a little bit about what that is all, is all about. On election day, when you show up to the precinct, to your polling place, which I hope that you do, we, we have about 15 to 1,800 volunteers who are providing you with that service at your polling place. And we train them prior to each election. But what we also wanted to make sure is that they were sensitive on how to best serve someone who had a disability. And they understood the, um, the technology and the things that we had in place to, to serve people with disabilities. And for that reason, we, uh, we also we explored the idea of having volunteers who not only took the basic training to be an election officer, but folks who wanted an enhanced training that they could be ambassadors at all of our polling places. So we did that last year. That was successful. And we decided to expand upon that. And we created a training video that, um, before you leave, please take a look at the video. It's out on display in the hall. It's only about five minutes long, so it doesn't take up too much of your time. But that video now is being used to train each and every one of our election officials so that they're all accessibility ambassadors on election day. So we're, we're very proud of the work that we're doing with the, um, the commission. And we want to just encourage everyone to um, take advantage of election day. Obviously, the absentee process is always available for anyone who cannot get to the polling place because of a medical or religious reason or 
if they happen to not be in the city on election day, that process is there. But we certainly love to see a lot of folks go out to the polls. And so we make sure that all of our polling places are accessible. And now all of our, our poll workers are receiving enhanced training. So we look forward to seeing you all on November 7th on election day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and again, we encourage everybody to come out and vote. Um, I want to call up now um, Chief Jerome Smith uh, from the, uh, he's the Chief of Civic Engagement and he runs the Office of Neighborhood Services. The Neighborhood Services Coordinators are your link on the ground. They're the eyes and ears uh, on the ground to Mayor Walsh. So uh, Jerome has a critical role in, in this area. And we do want to just ask um, the speakers if we could move it forward a little bit because we have our uh, sign language inter interpreter on a limited time schedule. That was the pre-hook. Um, <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everybody. Again, my name is Jerome Smith, and I'm Mayor Walsh's uh, Chief of Civic Engagement. Um, I wanted to th welcome you all today uh, to City Hall and congratulate uh, the commissioner and her team for a great event. Uh, I had the, the privilege of speaking at it last year. Um, and a lot of the departments in my cabinet actually have tables outside, so I encourage you to interact with the staff um, and find out some more of the programs that we uh, actually have in my cabinet that we are, are giving out to the residents of the city. Um, this event is exactly what Mayor Walsh has envisioned, uh, engaging residents at every community and making the city more inclusive, welcoming place. Uh, from working with the Dis Disability Commission to make sure that the, uh, the buildings, new buildings, existing buildings are ADA compliant to crosswalks and ramps in neighborhoods when we install new sidewalks are ADA compliant. There's a lot of work that we do. Uh, with the Disability Commission and with the community itself to make sure that we're getting your input um, on these important things. Uh, we, uh, the commissioner had mentioned working with uh, the council president, we had passed a language access uh, bill and a very important part of it is about not just uh, in interpreting language but also the needs, both hearing and um, sight impaired, uh, ASL, and so we have a director who is actually working through and, as, as, and she's actually successfully met with every department in the city and now each department is creating a plan about how they can make sure that you have access to that department and all the programs and the paperwork and the things that they're applying um, and she's going to hold them accountable to make sure that every department so like the commissioner says you call that department and they're not surprised or shocked or um, concerned by what you're asking for they're already trained and they understand um, what it is that they have to apply so um, that was one of the what great things that we had a chance of working together uh, my cabinet is committing to making sure that every voice is heard, no matter who you are, from the elderly commission that is in my cabinet to the City Hall to Go program, which brings city services to every neighborhood, our Spark Boston Council, which empowers millennials from every walk of life to participate in local government, to, to what the commissioner said, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, which is a liaison from every neighborhood. Um, who handles kind of the day-to-day -day as a liaison to the different city departments, to 311, uh, which many people use uh, to call and seek services, also was within the Office of Neighborhood Services. So uh, I kind of have a big bandwidth about interaction with the community, so I think it is very important that we take these tools and these steps to make sure that everybody has access um, to things that are going in the city. So again, I just wanted to be brief, and I just wanted to again welcome everybody here to City Hall and thank the commissioner for allowing me to speak today, and I'll be more than happy to talk with anybody after the program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Smith. So just to be respectful of everybody's time, it's a little bit after four o'clock now, um, we're gonna end, we'll wrap up the speaking program, but I do just wanna introduce some key people who have gi given their time to come out today and speak with you. And again, uh, they may have a few minutes to stay afterwards if you have questions. Uh, I'd like to um, give a shout out to Giselle Sterling, who is our Veterans Commissioner. Um, I'm going to give it to Jessica because I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> sure. So, um, Giselle Sterling from Veterans Commission, uh, Christine Puff from Community Preservation Act. I know that she is looking to recruit people, so if you want to get involved in community preservation, go and speak to her. And be civically engaged. Really big emphasis here, if you couldn't tell. Um, and then Neil Doherty from Intergovernmental Relations as well. All right, so again, I just want to thank everybody so much for coming out. I hope this is your first step. If you've been to City Hall many times, we welcome you back. If this is your first time here, uh, welcome, and I hope it was a great introduction. I'm thrilled to see the diversity of 
people from different neighborhoods, different backgrounds. Um, and again, please, I'll be here for a while, so come up and introduce yourself if I don't know you, if I haven't met you. And we look forward to working with you uh, for many, many years to come. Thank you. Oh, sorry, one more thing. I just want to thank my staff, who's worked really hard on this event. I don't want to end the event without uh, thanking them. Behind me is my chief of staff, Jessica Doonan. Thank you so much, Jessica. She is not only my right arm, she's also my right leg, so I need Jessica. Um, I also see Chris Morowski, who is our staff support specialist. We have Patricia Mendez, who is our architectural access specialist. And she works with Sarah Leung, who's our architectural access coordinator. We have Winston Pierre, who is our new outreach and engagement specialist. You'll all be seeing a lot of Winston in the coming uh, weeks and months. And we have our newest hire, Jamie, who's at the back of the room, Jamie Cohen. Okay, That's all our staff. We're fully staffed now for the first time in three years, so uh, we're excited. Okay. I just want to acknowledge a couple more people. My apologies. Um, one of the things that we really want to acknowledge is we have a couple board members in our, um, in our midst as well. I know Felicia's back in the back corner hiding out. There we go. Um, and I know that Jerry is here as well. And then I also just want to take a moment to thank um, Representative um, Yardley Sanchez from Health and Human Services as well. Thank you so much. All right, thank you all, and uh, have a great day.